Hello everyone, this is Michael Stephen Vargas from WeGoChess.com So, classical. So, there are different time controls in chess and the longest one is the classical chess. So, it can range from just between 15 minutes per player up to hours um, per player and even with increments. And I have just been browsing a lot of forums lately and the, everyone is like how to improve a blitz, a bullet, a rapid. Um, really a few, only a few amount of people actually try to ask this question, which is how do you excel in classical chess? What are, are there any techniques or pointers to understand in order for you to uh, do well in the longest time control in chess? And if you have been um, hovering over actual over the board tournaments, a lot of um, official games uh, are actually classical or also rapid but once you at the higher level there's a lot of classical um, games now, I think this is a pretty important discussion and I want to spearhead um, this talk and uh, that's a that's the topic for the day how do you excel with classical chess and one of the um, just the first reminder that I want to emphasize is if you are trying to excel in the classical format is it is um, it's important to also learn your openings so some people think that openings or, or preparation is not as important in classical just because there's so much time right and like in the blitz um, rapid where you just have to nail down the opening and I think that is partly true I also think that um, just because the format is longer doesn't necessarily mean that you can waste time so if you can save time and only focus those time on the things that matter that will actually be decisive for example the middle game and end game I think you will be much more successful and if you have watched a lot of professional games even if the format is classical a lot of elite players don't even think that much in the opening right so they have prepared even if they are playing in, the, in classical um, so some people say oh they are just very good in the opening so they don't think at that level but at that level their opponents are preparing so much as well so it will balance out they will they should still be wary but what you see is they don't really spend as much time in the opening than in the middle game and the end game so don't mind I don't forget to prepare your openings even if the time control is classical you will save more time this way and also you will save just what we call computing power right the endurance because if this is classical this is like going to be a battle of endurance you don't want to be um, investing a lot of energy just right off the bat right from the opening it's better to save that to the face spaces that actually matter which is the middle game and the end game so now at the tip that i think is the one of the most important in all of this is yes you need to prepare your end or opening but the thing that you prepare we need to prepare the most is obviously the end game so yes end games are important naturally because they are at the end of end, ending phase of the game so if you mess up in the end game there's no more room to make up for that mistake right because it's already the end of the game so but it is even more important in classical chess because usually players are feeble and weak at the end having to play through the middle game at the end game and this is the phase where they actually make a mistake so they have been defending for five hours straight right and then they don't know an end game and game um and game principle well, that's horrible and or maybe they are defending for the five hours and then they subconsciously uh, their mind starts wandering off and playing really bad moves so if you are mentally weak already at the end of, at the end game in a classical uh, time competition then which is natural uh, it's really good if you have prepared uh, to, if you have a solid end game foundation since you are less likely to make a mistake at this crucial phase this tip which is mastering end games 
will not completely eliminate the possibility of making mistakes in the end game, but it will at least minimize the potential damages that you could make from making a mistake. And it also makes you just play uh, intuitively just decent moves that doesn't lose in the end game. So I think this is much more important in classical than any other time controller out there. And also, this is another tip that I have for you if you want to excel in classical is you need to really think hard about sacrifices. So sacrifices usually occur in rapid, blitz, or bullet because there's not a much of time for the opponent to come out with a rib to, with a appropriate reply. reply. They, they can't concoct everything uh, from the limited time that they have. Of course, this is not the case in classical. They can actually think of the best possible reply for your sacrifice so if you are going to sacrifice you better have a really good reason for doing so um, because if they have played the best move which will they likely will if it's they, they are around your level um, or around just decent moves then sacrifices can really be painful um, because if there's no conversion then they, you will just lose the game if you actually rush and just sacrifice 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 in a classical format then it's likely that your opponent can just take longer think right and actually find the proper moves or sequence of moves to rip you revoke what you just did which is the sacrifice so it's really dangerous doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it there are situations where you should, but it's just way too dangerous, so you should limit it unless you have a really good reason in doing so. Next tip that I have for you is never give up. Because since the time control is long, most people think that they, they have made a mistake, let's say they hang up on, right, or their, their position is just um, not totally losing, but it's a little bit worse that they would just resign because they would think that oh they, they, the opponent has this much time in the world they should be able to convert this but you would be surprised that only actually a few people um, especially it is below 2000 rating could actually convert a winning position even in a classical this is because of overconfidence when someone is up for material they are much more likely to be overconfident with their decisions even if their decisions doesn't necessarily uh, have a, a substance behind them they, they will just play move so i'm gonna win right uh, and this can actually be an opportunity for you if you are below 2000 rating which is consists of probably the majority of people who will watch this video because if you are a higher rating player you are likely not to listen to some guy on youtube right so if if, even if the time control is classical, as long as you are under 2000 rating, I think it is still worth a shot. Another tip that I have for you is you should limit expected moves. So, um, if you are playing chess enough, you will learn that in every position, there are what we call an obvious moves that, um, that comes from intuition. Usually, most players will have a tune or will have identification to this to just excessive playing so if they have a lot of experience they played the game over and over again they will usually find the obvious moves that i will be talking about and if you only play obvious moves especially in classical you will get those because your opponent are likely to be um, keep are likely to think more of deep moves the best moves possible in the position since they have more time you also have more time but should really limit expected moves uh, that doesn't have any bearings behind them at all especially in this time format which is the longest time format because it is just too dangerous i will also say this do not be afraid to spend time in classical so i did say that um, in the opening that is better to prepare in the opening so you wouldn't waste time but I said that because so you actually allocate your time on the important things which is the middle game and the end game. There are a lot of decisions out there that even were at let's say one hour thing, right? If, you, if the time control is for hours, if it's really that important. So a lot of beginners would play classical 
and they are afraid to actually use their time which they have a lot of in this time format because they've just been using blitz and classic and rapid which is the some of the fastest time control so if you want to exit as long as you are you know that the particular move you are trying to decide on is that important then i think you should do it i think this is the most important not just one of the best important most important so one of the most important is the end games just uh, that i have discussed before but this is what the most important i think that can really help you excel in classical chess which is mental endurance usually classical control are where both players have enough time to think of the at least decent and accurate moves that issue that it would really make it hard to convert to any advantage so the positions are likely to be drawish and it will likely to last a long time so usually classical games are decided by those who can endure much more time so if you have a lot of mental endurance maybe just practicing chess in general you are likely to outlast someone who does not i think that's pretty important and also one of the actionable tips to do this is just having a good night's sleep so if you are trying to participate in the tournament who practice classical just go to a, just get a good night's sleep because you are less likely to be tired and you can injure long hours of mental torture if you have slept well the day before now this tip um this not tip my more discussion is more of a heads up in classical chess a lot of psychological factor is also in play so since you will be spending much more time with your opponent you are much more likely to observe them maybe they get up from the board they look around when you are taking your time to move or they play fast because you are spending much much more time with them so there's more room for psychological battles just ignore the psychological battles and just play the pieces not the board I the player the pieces not the players and just just treat it as a test of who's the better player in general this is so you could avoid the psychological issues and the very last tip i have to you for you is just play more classical so classical chess is different from blitz chess and rapid chess and you will realize this as long as more as you play more classical chess so in order for you to be much more adaptable much more use and experience this time control you actually need experience which is can be acquired by actually going out there and participating in this specific time control so i know that it's really generic but a repeated consistent practice really gives gives a long way to really most of your goals so i think that's i just want to end the, the tips um just play man play more classical so those are all the things that i just have to think of uh, on top of my head maybe you have more tips you can share to share too which you can feel free to comment below and if you like this video if you like this video you can actually give it a like so it can be recommended to more people and so i it also incentivizes me to make more videos so that is all sleep well and play chess